uh, size of market. If you want to grow a big business, you need to be going into a, a market that is really either really large or growing really fast. Uh, online clothing retail is both of those things. So for me, why I wanted to go into this space was because it had finally got to an interesting number. It's four bi it was four billion in 2010, online clothing retail. It was only 7% of the market. So it's already bigger than the online market for CDs and books. And it's only 7% of uh, the clothing retail market in the UK. And it's the fastest growing sector, despite recession, credit crunch, etc. So you also need to know what you want. Um, when you're going out to talk to investors, you need to link your investment to milestones and do your homework. How much do you want? What is it going to be for? What are you going to achieve with the money? Uh, and don't be naive to think that you'll get a bit of money and that will do you. You'll hit break even, all jobs are good and it's done. An investor won't believe that. So you need to be very clear that you're using that money to try and achieve something. Uh, and that will unlock then a valuation change, which will then allow you to raise more money to get to the next milestone. Um, you need to be very clear on what you're going to spend it on. And you need to be very clear on how you're going to get an exit for your investor. So they need to understand where the options are for you to basically either sell the business, IPO, etc., for them to get their money back and make a return. That needs to be crystal clear. So in terms of how I live, and in terms of traditional stages now, you should stage your business. Stage one for me was bootstrapping. So I raised then um, in the middle of the credit crunch in 2008 um, money basically, which was to validate my idea and build a prototype. And in general, you should be looking at you know less than 100K for that. The next stage is about basically launching an alpha product. Uh, so you built a prototype, you validated it, there is a market, all of these things. You now want money basically to put a team together to build your initial uh, <laughs> product to go to commercial launch. And again, you should be aiming for about that sum of money. Uh, and then the final bit, after that, once you've basically proved that you, you've got customers who want to pay for it and you can do a commercial launch, you're then raising money to scale the business, to go to customer two, three, four, five, six. So that's how you should look at your business. And you shouldn't therefore, I think I, I meet a lot of people who are just obsessed with valuation and it's just not relevant. What you need to do is you need to prove that you can hit milestones to deliver valuation. So that's the way around that you should be looking, not what should I, you know, how much am I gonna sell for my business? It's what can I do to justify to yourself, as well as the investor, that you deserve to raise money. So there's a great presentation on this actually online by a guy called Aaron Patzer on how he built mint.com to a 170 million pound business in three years following these exact um, stages of his business. And in terms of how I have therefore sort of followed those stages, the first part, the bootstrapping part, took me about two years. I raised 60,000 pounds to do that. Validated the idea, built prototype, filed patents. Uh, that unlocked the ability then to go out to um, basically build a team, get a runway to produce uh, the product, the commercial product. That's what we've done now. And that was on slightly less money than that. And that's what we achieved in terms of that goal at the end of last week. So we built that product, the create yourself from two photos to try clothes on, see how they fit. We got the commercial product, uh, commercial launch partner on board. We're now gearing up to launch. And because of that, that then allowed you to get scale the business money. I was going to be looking for the growth capital money in six months time. Um, but through networking, I met an industrialist who wanted to come on early. So he's now investing. We agreed on Friday to invest on tomorrow's valuation today to get that money in early. Um, so be very clear, clear on your milestones and deliverables. If you are very clear on those, you build up track record with your, and credibility with your investors, and that unlocks their network. So that's why stage three, I've now got an industrialist who wants to invest today because I've achieved these other things and my investors who basically linked me to that guy have um, 
the trust and faith in me that I've delivered on the previous parts of the business. Um, and as you go through allow for time, everything takes at least three times longer than you expect. So take your conservative estimates and you just treble them. There's no point uh, kidding yourself. I believe in the Malcolm Gladwell thing of 10,000 hours, um, and I think that pretty much holds true. So to become an expert, to get a lead, it's going to take you that much time and effort to make it work. Um, for me, because a lot of my stuff has been built on top of academic research, uh, academic research proves that a problem is solvable, but it doesn't give you commercial code, so you're going to have to rebuild everything from scratch. So to get from that stuff to that, will take you a long time. Um, how did I raise my money? So, again, as I mentioned, deliver on the goals and milestones you set. So I built my business plan day one. Uh, I actually, just last night, looked back at my business plan and it's all still completely valid. Some of the detail has changed, but it's still rock solid in terms of what we're doing, what we're trying to achieve. Um, and focus, like, if you had to shoot this, show me the money, you might as well forget it. Uh, network upwards, invest your time in networking into your client base. Now, th this last point, I think, is quite an important one. Um, I spent my early days, I went to a few networking events, which were mainly sort of other entrepreneurs, and I found that that wasn't going to do anything for me. So I was just meeting people who just wanted to provide services into young entrepreneurs, lawyers, uh, consultants, etc., etc. The people I want to network into are the people who are going to be my customers. So fashion, uh, clothing, um, and also into the investment community. That's where you need to focus your effort. So whatever industry or business you're in, spend your time and your effort networking into those. It's, it's quite comfortable going to a lot of you know, tech hub or tech crunch if you're doing technology events. You meet a lot of other people, you share stories about oh how difficult it is. But that's not moving your business on. You need to go and network your way into people who are going to move your business on. Find out what their issues are. Find out what they care about. Um, so, you know, I've met everyone from Martha Lane Fox through to, um, well, I'm about to have a meeting with Stuart Rose. So, those type of things. Um, and in terms of as well, if you start to network your way into some people who've got money and you build credibility with them, they unlock again other people. I mean, I've also met two billionaires in my time from working on this. Um, so, six degrees of freedom works. Um, and I think the last point is, oops, what's this one here? Uh, pay it forward. So, in terms of networking, the way the approach I have is that uh, I have well, I have a good memory for people, a good memory for faces, uh, and I have a you know, good talent for joining dots. So when you meet people, if they're interesting people, they have something, they're rela related to someone else you've ever met, do the connections before they need to do you a favour. So do a favour for someone else, they'll remember you, they'll do a favour back for you. Um, I think, for example, one, the way I got to ASOS, um, I once was at a networking event for the gerson Lehman Group, I'm an expert, for them, for the um, betting industry in terms of fixed odds betting terminals. Uh, I met there the ex uh, buying manager for TK Maxx. She introduced me to the ex editor of Draper's Magazine, which is the clothing industry bible. He introduced me to uh, uh, Peter Williams, who was the ex CEO of Selfridges and the board director of ASOS. There you go. Three, three jumps to get, it, to, get to ASOS. And, but that took a year, so and that was all just from having essentially an interesting conversation with somebody at an event, which led to something a year later, which was useful for me. Um, and I found that uh, that is happening more and more. So meet interesting people. Um, when I go to events, I spend my time trying to talk to somebody I get a connection with. Uh, don't target the people who you think or know in the room who've got money, that's, that's a waste of time. Uh, just have an interesting conversation with someone interesting. Like my target for ever going to an event is meet two people, have two interesting conversations, then I'm done. That's it. 
So you have an interesting conversation, they'll remember you, and then when they meet somebody interesting to you, six months' time, a year's time, they'll remember you, they'll make the connection. That's the important part. Um, I think even sort of along those lines, uh, I did a, um, a session, a convergence of media think tank for the DCMS back in 2000, early 2008. And then um, uh, sort of late last year, I got a call from uh, the cabinet office asking whether they could use my office for an event. Uh, they came and had a look. In the end, it was too small. But that event was the launch of uh, East London Tech City. So, you know, that's quite a random roundabout thing. But again, it was because somebody at this convergent think tank had remembered me, remembered what sector I was going into, uh, thought I was an interesting growth uh, tech story, uh, passed that up to number 10. And that had led to that event, which I then went to. So, you know, make sure that you meet interesting people, uh, you do your goals, you have your milestones, um, and the rest will come to you. So deliver on your goals. By delivering on your goals, you build credibility currency with your network. That will um, mean that your network will start selling into their network, um, which will lead to investment. So you look after your goals, your milestones, and your network. Everything else will take care of itself.